Alright, good afternoon everybody, welcome to our show. We are Phoenix Swords. We are going to be doing some sword fighting examples for you. What we are going to start with is one of our theatrical fights. We are not claiming this one is particularly historical, but since everything else we are going to do for you is fairly historical, we're going to start with this in the hopes you can see the difference. Later, after we've shown you the other. Oh, come on, your boots are soggy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I already talked about the soggy. <laughs> historical fight which didn't have a lot of in them. <laughs> Anyhow, the difference between some of our stage fights and our historical fights is the historical fights we're going to do actually come from books written by sword masters starting around the year 1300. And the first one we're going to show you, yes you, is my wife's favorite so I'll let her talk about it. You're welcome. Um, we use an annual known as 133 or the Walter Respect Book. Um, this was originally developed both with uh, Higgins and then with um, the uh, Cambridge Historical Arts Group. What we're going to do is we're going to do a series of uh, maneuvers and counter maneuvers, and those are a lot shorter than anything you saw previous to this. So, uh, you know, something you'll see a lot in today's show is uh, maneuvers, counter maneuvers, very short things, never as long as that fight. So, we're going to start in our Guards Rewards. And he's going to start in half shield, I'm going to start in underarm. And then we're just going to do... Really As you can see, that was a little faster than the last one. And pretty much it's over in just a few seconds. But once again, we talked about counter maneuvers. So what did I do there? I just held him, came around, and I did the same thing to him. Now you don't have to just always use the swords. You notice these are used as a partner. So you can do grapples. <laughs> and pretty much I have complete control of him unless he wants to relinquish them. Do I do that one more time? Yes, let's do this one more time. Okay. We're too far apart. Right? <laughs> <laughs> are you going to charge? <laughs> yes. Whoa! Oh. Oh, also grapple. He was nice, and he did not put his foot in the middle of my back and shove <laughs> into my spine. Only my knee. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, because this was often taught by um, non-sequestered monks and priests, you and you often you want to show off what you had learned. There are moves that we can use, which some moves are meant entirely to embarrass or dis disarm your opponent. They are not meant to kill or harm, they are meant to make your opponent look like a fool. For this, I am going to start in what is known as long point. I am going to thrust at her. I'm not trying to knock her off. But she takes my shield and leaves me completely defenseless. <laughs> However, there are other maneuvers you can use. One. He's feigning sloppy swordsmanship. He's in a position known as fiddle bow. Oh, he's so tired. Look at how tired. Isn't he tired? Oh, he's yeah. So tired. A sloppy. He's sh slouching. He looks awful. He's an easy target. Maybe not. <laughs> now we're going to show you exactly how short this sword fight can be by doing the shortest one we can. Let's Should switch we switch position. positions? The shortest fight we have encountered thus far. Well, other than the sickle one. That's right. <laughs> the end. Oh, <laughs> so as you can see, unless we're sort of well matched, it's all over within a moment. So we're going to move a little further forward in history okay. to the I'm Belgium. I'm going to be in the middle of the field where I've been doing their historical challenge. Okay. Yep. All right. So that one that uh, 
my wife just demonstrated is from the 1300s. Now we're going to switch to one from the 1400s for a curved one-handed sword known as a falchion or messer and very popular with, with foot soldiers. This particular manual that we're doing comes from a book written in 1473 by a priest named Hans Le Kuchner. Now, nowadays the ideas of priest sword fighting seems a little bit strange, but back then you traveled from city to city, you wanted to go on a pilgrimage to another cathedral, the roads weren't safe at all and you had to protect yourself whether you're a priest or not. So the priests tended to sword fight as much as anyone else, and because they were the literate people, they're the ones who tended to write down the instructions. So a lot of our oldest books come from church schools, including this one for the Falcon. <laughs> Would you prefer I did the one where I throw you on the ground? No, no, that's okay. <laughs> All right. Now the manual says what I'm really supposed to do is have a giant bag and to throw him in in the name of God. <laughs> However, since it involves throwing him on the ground and sitting on him, and we are quite soggy today, we're going to forego that part for now. Oh, but. You. The instructions say, throw them on the ground, sit on them, break out your backgammon board, and play a few games with your friends. <laughs> you found where it went? Yes. I should point out that everything we're doing on this show comes from books written in Germany. It's not that the Germans are necessarily better sword fighters, they were just very orderly people and wrote down a lot of notes. So we have a lot of notes from the German school. Our two o'clock show, we're going to be doing things from other places in Europe, some Italian, some English, some French, but this show is all German. Now, the Germans loved this sword, there's a hand and a half sword, which means you can use it one-handed if you're up on horseback riding around, going after all those people not lucky enough to be up on horseback, <laughs> or two-handed if you want some real power in your swings, and if you're facing someone in armor, you'd actually take your left hand, put it on the end of the sword, not up near the point where it's very sharp, but a little ways back. <laughs> oh yeah, someone in armor, send them on out. Wait, wait, what, what am I being volunteered for? Red Rover, Red Rover, send Devin right over. <laughs> and you'd aim with your left hand to get in behind those plates, and then you can either poke it in where it counts or use it like a giant lobster pick and open them up. <laughs> and of course, if they're wearing those nice helms, you can hold it backwards. That's just a hat, not a helm. <laughs> and use it like a giant war hammer. However, they were also used against unarmored opponents, and in 1570, a man named Joachim Meyer wrote a book for actually a whole bunch of weapons, so we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff from Meyer's book, but this is from his long sword section because it was his favorite weapon. He said this is the true German art of swordsmanship. So Dave and Carr are going to show some examples from this 1570 book on the long sword. When we came in and met, she came for the overhead, and I blocked. And from here, there's a couple directions to go. Use the hilt, the hilt to knock it aside, came around for the twist, and it hit the side of her head. She felt me start to moving aside, and just lifted her sword back. Let me overcommit in the other direction, and then dropped it down on the, yes, they saw it. <laughs> time, I felt her start to lift back and decided, well, I'm not going to go this way. I'll twist around this way, coming at the other side of her head. Do that once more. Oh, I suppose. Yay, uh, thank you, let's move over and away from the knives. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Actually, the book has him landing on the back and, you know, being very helpless. <laughs> but we're trying to avoid that too much landing in the mud. 
just today, no offense. <laughs> and as she, if he turns around, you can see why. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. In that same book, written in 1570, he also had a section for a weapon called a dusak, which was another curved one-handed sword, like the falchion, but a hundred years later. We're not entirely sure what the dusak was. There's not a lot of them that seem to have survived to the 21st century. We know they're a curved one-handed weapon. They used practice ones made of wood that we have drawings of, but you know how it is. It's drawings aren't always accurate. So we're going to use the falchions again just so we can do the proper technique, even if this isn't necessarily the proper historical weapon. even with big two-handed swords, you overbalance and you're too close to your opponent, they can use it against you. All right. Now we're switching to other weapons. You want big ones or little ones first? We're going to do both. Big ones. Oh, we got little ones on this side. Okay. What's your response? Little ones. Little ones. Big ones. We are going to do both, so it's just a question of which one. Which of the big ones? We've got two big ones. Well, let's do Mike. this one first, because if they pick those up, let's do these the ones. The mob has spoken. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, let's grab a roll demonstration. These are Beck de Corbins, which is actually a French name, but the Germans liked them too. Everybody liked them. Send Devin out again, would you? <laughs> these are designed to be an anti-armor weapon. They have a nice spear so you can stab people, they have a hammer so you can hammer them, a nice hook to try and get those edges and pull, and of course you can always use the end and trip people if you want. So very much an anti-armor weapon. Why do I come here in armor? <laughs> the same thing, but I'm happy you do. Now in the 1470s, a man named Talhofer wrote some instructions on how to use this that Dave and Kara are going to use. And because, you know, they're married to each other, we don't let them use the real ones for this. <laughs> so they're going to be using our practice ones, which still hurt a lot, to show you the techniques from 1470 or so. Switch. Okay. Yes, this side. Just change direction, come in at the point. I want to try that. I'm not going to dump her on the ground, but Thank you. I'm in a prime position to toss her right over my knee. I have a way to deal with that, though. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. <laughs> now she's got me over her leg <laughs> and a little off balance. <laughs> and come around with the hammer. Switch. Yes. This is the one where we want to be this way. Yep. Take all that momentum and make a quick swing, knock it clear aside, and come in with the point. But what if I'm ready for that? Ha! Oh! I'm not going to throw you because there's sharp stuff behind you. <laughs> but she can come in, hook me by the throat, dump me to the ground, and the manual instructs her to then pull the knife out of her belt, jump down on me, and stab me. Let's pass on that. Maybe tomorrow. We need to have shows later on today. Yeah, yeah. Maybe tomorrow. Alright, so in the 1570, Joachim Meyer, like I said, he wrote about almost everything, also wrote about similar weapons, not quite the same, but close enough that Robin and I will do some maneuvers. This is very short because we're using the real ones and they are, you know, horrifically dangerous. That's why. Oh, it's the 
wet again. <laughs> I'm gonna have to spend so much time tonight de-rusting things. <laughs> and now the little weapons. And now the little weapons. All right. Let's All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with the dagger. Now, oh yes, the, most boats for little weapons are down here. The medieval dagger was a very, very nasty weapon. It isn't just a knife. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? It was very much a, an anti-armor weapon. Although wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 what's with all these anti-armor weapons? You could use it like a lobster pick, get it in and th get them open. Or if you could find a little zing in the armor, like I left with the other weapon, you put the point in, and then you hey! just hammer on the nice round end. So again, very much an anti-armor weapon. They're also very, very sharp and hard to see coming. They aren't really edged very much so much as long and pointy and go right through that lovely ring armor. I got the mobile for this one. So we're not going to use the really sharp one. They're going to use some slightly rounded ones because, as was said, we have other shows to do. Sorry. Over there. Uh, there's going to be some soggy today. Oh yeah, I kind of uh, okay. assumed. Okay, with me throwing this? Yep. <laughs> oh, you, you missed that one. Come on, Gary, you can do better. Yeah. <laughs> I can. That's the area. Okay, so she oh, got me by the leg. Let's see if I try that yep. again. If she has any other thrills. <laughs> You're enjoying this a little too much. <laughs> Let's try this again. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if you can get me to the ground one. <laughs> see, there's a counter to everything, including these little dagger performances. However, there are some times when you're evenly matched. <laughs> evenly matched? <laughs> we know better. Who's <laughs> the bigger, stronger opponent has the advantage? Is that evenly matched? I'm done with this. I don't need this. <laughs> well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> if I'm quick enough, I can break his arm over my shoulder. If I'm quick enough, no. I can. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Now the last of the weapons we're going to show you this morning is the medieval lawnmower or sickle, and this comes from a manual written in 1550 by a man named Paulus Hector Mayer. To be honest, I think he lost a bet, <laughs> but for whatever reason, he did write a book on how to fight with the sickle. Now, as you probably noticed, short weapons there's a lot of grabbing. And these are very short weapons, so there's going to be quite a bit of grabbing in them. Now, the other thing to note, this manual was actually translated on our group's behalf out at the University of Massachusetts. So at least as of right now, we're the only people in North America doing it, because they're the only people who paid to get it translated out of 1550 Latin. So, at least until the translation gets released to the public later this year, we're the only folks doing this. <laughs> this one says, she swings at my head and I block her, and I swing at her head and she blocks me. Then it says, she skins my arm. It does not, you, you didn't have to roll up my sleeve. <laughs> uh, it does not say anything about blocking. Instead, what it does, it says, hit her in the head. So, apparently, in Germany in 1550, you're walking around without skin on your arm, as long as your friend looks like this. <laughs> I wouldn't be your friend. <laughs> Bad strange friends, Zach. <laughs> uh, we ruined three pairs of pants getting this, right? Not mine. <laughs> this one says that she reaches out and tries to grab my hand and cut it off. It says block. I like that. <laughs> and it says for me to try and hit her in her, her face. <laughs> and then it says, quote, she cuts at my loins. That's not so good. The good news is it says to block 
and hit her in the head. So maybe I won't have any skin on my arm, but at least I can keep walking. You should do the last one down here. I like the last one. The last one. All right, we'll do the last one down here. Truly our shortest fight. There is a lot of head hitting with these, that's true. All right, the last one is very simple. Ooh. Let's do it down here so they can see down here. I really regret saying that. <laughs> yes, it's very short. She swings at my head, I block, and then before I can do anything else, she slams me in the chest as hard as she can. Hadouken! No! <laughs> I'm a fair bit bigger than she is, but you know what? This still convinces me to stop and think about doing something else. So that is where we'll end the show, and I will stop and think about doing something else. We are going to be back out here at 2. And at two, we're going to be doing a completely different set of things where we'll be doing some Italian, some English, and some French, Scottish, and, Spanish. and Spanish. some Spanish, different Spanish. fighting. Spanish. So this was our German show. <laughs> two o'clock will be our everywhere else in Europe show. So we'll see you then. Thank you very much. <laughs>